Hi, this is Craig Brown, and I am the author of Stop Hiding, Start Healing. I hope you enjoy the following message. I share from my heart and my own personal experience how to deal with and discover how to be set free from life's challenges, dealing with the pain of the past, shame, guilt, depression, anxiety, life struggles, and addiction. The following message should be a word of encouragement to you. And I hope it is. At the close of the message, I'll tell you exactly how to get a copy of my new book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. But in the meantime, enjoy the message. Tonight, we've gone over the format of the inventory, right? And now we're going to talk tonight about, and again, we, let me just review real quick. Because when we went through our inventory, we talked about the person, right? The person that may have caused us harm, hurt, or whatever in our life, right? And the cause. The next column was, what was the cause of that? Third, what was the effect of that? What, you know, by the harm that I received. The damage that was done. And then lastly, what was my part? Um, Not going to spend a whole lot of time, but that's just a quick review of the inventory that we went over last week. Okay? We can get... You can get a copy of this. It's on the on the website. But we went over it in depth last week. Go back and check out that video if you want, because I went step by step, column by column. But what that does when we work through this exercise, what it does is uh, it's to, it's really increasing our self awareness. And I wanted to talk about a number of different things. A number of different things, feelings, emotions that are going to be produced as we are working through this step. And, you know, this is a ministry about truth and grace. The truth is we've got defects, challenges, pain, shame, addiction, uh, guilt, depression, anxiety. We've got, you know, we're dealing with not all of us, all of these things, but some things for some of us and what have you. So it, but it produces a lot of different things, right? It produces a lot of different things. Uh, number one, shame. Number two, pain, guilt, etc. And the the thing is, we're reluctant to deal with it because of that, because of these emotions and what have you. But the 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 grace part, the truth is, it's there. The grace is okay through God's power and His strength and guidance and encouragement. We're going to be able to work through these things. We're going to become fully more uh, uh, more self aware as we work through this exercise. And the more self-aware you are and in touch with your feelings, your emotions, right? How we're doing mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, the much better off you're gonna be and the healthier you are gonna get in every area. Some may advance more, the you know, the, the emotional part may be more secure over time, the spiritual part, then it, the physical part, the mental part. They all work in coordination with one another, but you may advance in one of those areas more than you would another. But in doing this and working through this step uh, step and principle, it's important to realize um, some uh, how self-aware, how more self-aware we can be. And I want to touch on uh, about eight, nine different um, things, uh, feelings, emotions, and things that we're going to be working through and you need to embrace. You just... We just have to for it to be successful. Now, the principle four, principle four says, openly examine and confess my faults to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. And again, when we reach this step after being through steps one, two, and three, and now we're here at four, this is where the honesty kicks in. The honesty uh, must kick in, kick in in order for us to be successful in this exercise. We have to be honest. This is also called, quote, the growth step. This is where a lot of the growth takes over. It begins to really, really happen in our recovery. Now, let me share truth with you as well. Um, This is also the step where a lot of people get stuck. Okay. A lot of people get stuck in this step. Okay. I'm talking about 22 years of experience and seeing and hearing, working through, serving, caring for many of the different men over the last 22 years. And this is the place where 
a lot of people quit. Okay, this is the place where a lot of people quit. And I just want to, uh, from my heart to you, and say, listen, we, you, Aura and I, we used to run from the pain. We used to run from the tough things. Not now. Okay, this is not where you want to step out and quit. This is not the place. You've worked very hard to get to this place. Get through it. And you're not alone. You have a sponsor, accountability partner. And of all things, if you're a Christian believer, you've got, you've got the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit to help you through this, right? Really do. So work through it. Don't run from it. Work through it because you're being honest with yourself, God, and somebody else. Wonderful crossroads getting there. All right. Psalm 139. Uh, oh, step four. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. That's from 12 steps. Fearless, searching moral inventory. Now, here's the psalm I wanted to base this on. It's not a new song, a new scripture. You've heard this. But it has everything to do with how we're working through this inventory, this exercise. Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Know my heart. Um, God, don't, God knows your heart. He knows your struggles. He knows your victories. He knows everything about you because you were fearfully and wonderfully made. He just does. So if you ever think that you don't matter to him, you do. If you feel a distance from him, he hasn't gone anywhere. He created the universe, time, space, and matter. Um, so he's there. But it, so it's like, God, search and know my heart. This is the whole point of recovery. Search this heart of mine, Lord. Then it says, test me. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's anything offensive in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's about searching. It's about God knowing our heart, which he does. It's about being honest with myself, God, and somebody else. And it's about, Lord, is there anything offensive in me? And their answer is yes. We're all, we all sin. Sure, there's, there's defects, character defects, shortcomings, and other things we have to be embraced and, and recognize. And we, the whole point of it, whole point of this is to get rid of them. What are they? Ugh, they're no good anymore. Get rid of it. That's working, sifting, searching. So here's, a, here's how we're going to develop, as we work through this, developing our self-awareness um, and embracing the emotions and everything that, that is the result of this exercise. And these are things we're going we're gonna to feel and we're going, or uh, emotions we're going to experience, rather, working through this exercise. And um, I'm going to go through these. And I just want to comment on each and every one of them. And again, you may relate to some of these things because when we're working in that column number one and we're bringing up a person, right, that uh, and in column number one, what our father, co-worker, a boss, uh, uh, you know, ex-husband, ex-wife, whatever that may be, family member, extended family. Um, how did you feel about that? When you when I when we went over this last week and I said, think of the people that you would put on this, and generally the first person that came to mind would be the first person you put on in your inventory in that column number one. And the first thing we would uh, the first uh, experience we would have in thinking about that person would be the first point I want to make is resentment. You know, we have resentments against someone. In column number one, who is it? Could be any, whoever you list. And they call it causes resentment. Now, here's what resentment produces, right? When we resent, we feel injured. Okay. We feel left out. We, we are angry or bitter, or we we're feeling violated. Those are kind of the expressions. Those are kind of the, what we are feeling when we think of or feel resentment towards somebody else, when we resent, when we resent, it's about feeling injured, left out, angry, or bitter. And that is, that's why this exercise is so important because it's not for them. 
It's not for anybody on that first column, any of the people that you may list. It's for you. It's for you. So if you're feeling this resentment, it's about putting it down with paper, putting it down, allowing the allowing this to come to the surface, dealing with it. And I'm not ever going to say once and for all, because it may linger for a while. You're going to you're going to deal with it and you're going to allow the Lord to take it from you. These feelings of anger or bitterness or what, you know, you're or, or feeling violated. You're going to be able to to heal and allow these to be taken from you. The second thing when we think of or work through our recovery, the second uh, is fear. When we fear, okay, when, and I've said, I've said often, everything that you and I have always wanted is on the other side of fear, okay? If you want to have a successful inventory, if you want to have a successful recovery, if you want to have a healthy, successful marriage, if you want to have a healthy career, right? If you want to have a healthy lifestyle, it's on the other side of your fears. Our fears can be inhibiting. Now, when we fear, okay, as a result of this exercise or bring up our fears, we feel threatened. Fear instills a threatened feeling. It just does. We're fighting for survival when we're dealing with fear. We're resisting change, okay? We're resisting because of our fears and we're maybe experiencing rejection as a result of our fear as well okay and and this isn't just uh um this is not just for the people that we're putting in that first column of our inventory these are just emotions that are that are um that are brought up as a part of the exercise but if it is the person that you feel resentment towards if it is the person that you are fearful of it's perfectly natural, but you have to work through it, okay? Now, third thing that we uh, discover, the third thing that may be uncovered as a part of this exercise is re repressed anger, okay? Repressed anger. Now, when we feel, when if that anger is to, if we've uh, just, you know, you know, uh, don't deal with it and we just want it to go away, and, you know, it's just simmering, it's under the surface. Well, what does it do? Anger or repressed anger causes resentment, right? If you think of someone and you're just, oh gosh, you just, oh, but you don't express it, you don't write it down, you don't journal about it, you don't pray about it, you don't do any, you know, you don't make note of it to deal with it, and it's just repressed. Well, it, it breeds resentment. One does the other. Uh, causes depression, self-pity, anxiety, stress. It just does, you know? Uh, you know. And you know the profile of the person that looks all calm and cool, collected on the outside, and, but on the inside, they're just in you know, total turmoil. And we're, we have, you may be him or her. And we're just, you know, that's just, you know, that's, you develop survival skills at a very young age and that's maybe how, that may be one of them and how you survive. You don't want to get, you know, uh, fully enraged, but it's just repressed and it's there. It's not healthy because it leads to other things, depression, anxiety, stress, etc., and resentment. So bring it up. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. OK, and and we have to embrace it and deal with it in a very healthy way. The third thing <clears throat> that we think that we may experience is uh, approval seeking, okay? As you're working through this, and I, will, I think we touch on, yeah, touch on codependency. Um, and for those of you, you know, need more information about codependency, we have a wonderful small, one of the women's small groups, excellent small group. Um, and we can share more about codependency as well. But it's a lot about approval seeking. It has to do with approval seeking. And that's one of the things that could, uh, the, the emotions or what have you that could um, that could come up and and it could be uh, you could describe it as a character defect as as well because we're always seeking approval right and let's go back to the first column say that person in that first column is someone that that, that all you did and 
throughout your youth, young adult life, or maybe into your adult life, was trying to get that approval of that father or of that leader or of that, you know, someone, right? And this is what the exercise will do. It'll bring up the fact that you or I were struggling with approval seeking. It leads to people pleasing, feeling unworthy, feeling like a failure, ignoring our own needs. We put all of our energy into trying to please other people and we neglect ourselves. That's codependency, fearing criticism, lacking confidence, okay? Approval seeking will do that. Those are all the secondary challenges that, you know, that approval seeking breeds. It just does. But it's one of the one of the items that could come up that you may be struggling with as a result of this exercise. And if it is, you have to embrace it and work through it. Okay. Um, next one is control. Some of you are getting some of you like this one. Yeah, I can tell control we need that we have that desire that need need to be in control we have to control i've controlled this addiction i've controlled this pain this life struggle this whole time and then then i got to step one and i admitted my life was unmanageable and i couldn't control my tendency to do the wrong thing and i stopped playing god and i gave up control that's a beautiful thing that is a total beautiful thing um but maybe that that character defect hasn't been taken you haven't let go of that and as a result due to our need and and again a need to be in control what do we do <clears throat> we overreact to change we lack trust we manipulate others we fear failure we can be intoler intolerant, judgmental, and rigid when we're trying to control, okay? And as you're, again, working through this inventory, working through step four, principle four, these are the things that are revealed. They're called uh, defects and character defects and shortcomings, okay? They've been there for a while for most of us, okay? Those of us that have been in recovery for a while, uh, we've been able to get rid of most, maybe not all yet, still working through them, right? But that's how they are described, character defects and shortcomings. And the only way we fully recognize them is like we're doing tonight. Learn about them. Where are they? How are they? You know, do I have them? Is this what I'm struggling with? And how do I be set free from these? That's the goal. So control, giving up control. This exercise will help you give up control. Do your, doing your inventory will definitely help you give up, lead to giving up control. And it may take some time. Okay, give yourself, give yourself some time. Next is fear of abandonment. Okay, fear of abandonment. When we fear abandonment, we may feel insecure. We may worry a lot. We may feel rejected, become codependent. Okay, and avoid being alone. All right, fear of abandonment. A lot of people stay in relationships, bad relationships, because of their fear of abandonment. A lot of people will stay in certain company or stay in a certain sphere of influence, stay in a certain group for fear of abandonment. They have a deep seated fear of being alone. Okay, well, there's one that will never abandon you, is that it? That is the Lord. So. You know, you do have he's he's right there with you at all times. But we had this is one of the things that could be uncovered as a part of our working through the steps, working through our inventory is. Uh, and a lot of times we had no clue, you know, until we learn what it is, talk about it like we are now. And then after the fact, going through this exercise and, we, and we're like, wow, I didn't realize that, you know. I did not realize that. And when you're honest with yourself, God and somebody else, it's like an epiphany. Wow. And then you're able to talk about it, talk it through. Okay. Next one is, uh, and again, this is, yeah, this could be, um, this could re really relate to, really relate to the first column. Because you may have had an ex-boss or a boss or 
you may still have or 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 a domineering dad okay the next one is fearing authority figures maybe you fear um, maybe you have an underlying fear of authority figures okay and as a result of this working through this exercise that could be revealed it, it's definitely one of the things because this this is part of our my study and part of you know what I've learned as a part of working through these steps and being able to share it with you. When we fear abandonment, we may feel insecure. There are a lot of insecurities. We all have them. All of us have told a lot of insecurities, you know, some more than others, some less than others. Matters not how many or how little. We just have them. We all have to agree. Can we agree? We all have insecurities. And this fearing authority figures can make us feel very, uh, you know, uh, very inadequate, you know, very inadequate, um, fear of rejection, uh, may, you know, we compare ourselves to others, uh, we react versus act, um, you know, that, you know, this underlying, and you made it, we may not even realize that, that, that's what, you know, when you put your finger on it, wow, that is true. You know, I had that boss or I had that narcissistic boss and, you know, I just, and as a result, or, or maybe it started with the dad that was domineering or the mother that was just very domineering. And that led to you to develop your escape plans and your survival skills and your coping mechanisms. And you took that with you into your youth and your, your, your high school years or college years, uh, and then career. And then you end up with another uh, real winner who's rather domineering and you just have this an overlying or underlying fear of authority. And that comes up in this, especially when you're putting those folks in in column number one. OK. And the last thing I'll share, we'll wrap up here. The last thing that uh, that can be produced. And this is the cool part. This is the really, really good news and the cool part uh some things uh, so, uh one aspect of our life that can be thought out and i mean thawed are frozen feelings that's right you don't find them in the frozen food section you find them in your own heart frozen feelings right when we have frozen feelings we we may not be fully aware of uh, or we may be unaware of our feelings i had this i really uh struggled with this all right i mean i'm, I'm like you know i remember people were like you know calling me a ice man or flatliner because i mean i just you know I, I was there was no up there was no down you know and i didn't know how to grasp my because uh well let me i know where it began um at our dinner table back at the house oh you didn't talk about feelings and emotions you are you kidding me? Absolutely not. No, we're not talking about your feelings because it's not about you, son, or you, daughter, or you. This, everything's about me, right? And that's the kind of environment I grew up in. So I didn't know how to feel. Oh, I knew my emotions. I knew, oh, believe me. But, you know, I developed an escape plan and survival skills and everything to deal with it, the coping mechanisms to deal with pain and abandonment and and, and it's just, I, I was like numb. You become numb, right? And, you know, I felt some emotions, but, you know, I, I didn't, I couldn't come to grips with how I, you know, my own feelings, you know, about things. It was really interesting until that, until Jesus came in and stirred me up and started breaking me down and building me up. And that's just what happens. I'm going on too much, but frozen feelings. You, you have frozen feelings that need to be thawed. They do. Because frozen feelings um, cause us to, you know, can cause us depress to be depressed, uh, have distorted feelings, distorted feelings, you know, uh, and then struggling with relationships, you know, and, and not expressing your feelings, you know, early on. I don't know about you or where you were able to stand up, you know, if you were being mistreated and not treated uh, treated disrespectfully or treated a certain way that you wouldn't stand for which what did you do did 
did you just cower and just, you know, take it and, you know, and grin and bear it? Or did you speak up or did you draw a boundary and say, hey, hold on a minute? Yeah. I mean, that's just, um, you know, and that's just comes from these feelings being un a thought and us getting, you know, embracing uh, how we're feeling and about ourselves instead of worrying about everybody else and being able to embrace it and, and, and stay in it, stay in it instead of running from it, stay in it. And all of a sudden he's feeling all of a sudden, the, you know, and this is what recovery does. You know, it does. It, 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 it uncovers, it softens that hardened heart. It thaws those frozen feelings. It does. It, it develops a, you know, so a deeper self-awareness of, of you and I and how we are doing right. And how are we people pleasing? No, I don't want to, I do not want to, I've got to stop doing that. You know, do I have deep resentments? If I do, I'm going to write these down in my inventory. What do I fear? What are my biggest, biggest fears? As a result, I'm going to journal. I'm going to write this down. I'm, that's, that's one of the effects in my inventory. One of the effects of this circumstance or this, you know, this person or what have you. Oh, it's just amazing, isn't it? And I hope I hope it's helpful for you. And because all these things, and again, they're all listed here on, in the post earlier tonight. Get a copy of them and work through those. Make sure you incorporate those into your um, into your how you're working through feeling about yourself. There are so many more. Matter of fact, there. Yeah, uh, there were a few I couldn't even include on here. Low self esteem, you know, low self worth. Uh, these are things that are uncovered and, uh, you know, what was in the dark, the light's going to share, you know, it's going to be in the light eventually. And it's uh, shining the Lord's light on those areas of your heart and the areas of your life that you've kept covered. And the whole point of recovery is to be honest with myself, God, and somebody else. I need to do this. And that's where we are now in our study and in our, in our lesson plans uh, on this uh, last day of April. And that it is this April, June, February, March, April. Yeah, um, that's where we are right now. And we'll continue on in our lessons. And all of them are specifically designed to help us grow, right? We have, have an attitude and approach of growth. I want to grow, Lord. I want to change, Lord. I want to deal with these character defects. I want to deal with these shortcomings. I want to work through this exercise over the coming weeks with the help of our group leaders, you know, all of them are available to help you in your group to discuss these things, right? And as I said, when you put your life on paper, when you put your life on paper, it leads to healing and freedom. It does. This whole, this whole, all Christ-centered recovery is specific, specifically designed, all right, to set you free. It's specifically designed to give you the per find, help you find the purpose and the mission that has been covered by your pain, your shame, your guilt, and, and also maybe your addiction, right? Or your broken marriage, your divorce, or whatever is whatever you are struggling with. It's specifically designed to give you a new past and a new hope. And it's not a it's not a, a past, um, although we deal with it, it's not a past uh, ministry. It's not a past exercise, it's a future exercise. Because you want to be better tomorrow than you were today. You want to be better next weekend by the, you know, better than you were today. You want to keep improving. And that's the goal. Yes, we're going to hit stuck places yet, but you have to recognize them. It's a warning sign. Yes, we're going to have, you know, complacency. We're going to lose some motivation along the way. Of course, life is can be a struggle. It can be. There's no doubt about it. That is the truth. But the grace is when you work it, work, put in the effort, put in the effort. The most important thing you can do is put in an effort for you. Nobody else but you. So keep working it. As we work through this, we'll begin to talk about the relational side. 
right? And we could talk about strengthening our marriages, strength, strengthening our relationships, strengthening our relationships with our kids, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're striving to get to. But in the meantime, this is about you and nobody else. Stick with it. Stick with it. Do not quit. There's no quit in you. All right. There used to be. There's no quit in you. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much just for this exercise, Lord, just helping us and guiding us and bringing up all these different uh, different emotions and other things that we deal with on a regular basis, Lord, uh, not only through our inventory, but just life. You, you knew that, Lord. That's why you sent the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to come and be with us and in us and through us. And we just welcome him, welcome that in our life to take over our recovery, to guide us every step of the way, Lord. So I pray for every single person, Lord God, that's within earshot or viewing this. I pray an abundance of blessings, of encouragement, of hope, strength, healing, uh, just transformation, honesty, you know, stepping forward, admitting, Lord, that they step out of hiding and start healing. Lord, I pray that for all of us here, Lord God, that we'll take our recovery, we'll take our life, our purpose and mission that you have for each and every one of us to another level. Lord, you take us, Lord Jesus. We can't do it without you. We cannot do it without you. So I pray that for every single person, Lord, bring, give them strength, encouragement, and hope and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I really hope that my message was an encouragement to you. Okay, I really, truly do. Now, to get a copy of my book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, one of two ways. You can go to my website, stophidingstarthealingbook.com. Stophidingstarthealingbook.com. Or you can go directly to Amazon and in the search bar, put in Craig Brown, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. Okay, if you want to reach out to me, you can send me a direct message on our Facebook page. Stop Hiding, Start Healing on Facebook. Stop Hiding, Start Healing. I hope, I hope we'll all be able to do that very soon. Stop Hiding, Start Healing. Enjoy my book. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you next time.